Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be talking about a very interesting condition called albinism. I'll be largely focusing on the eye associations and eye involvement with albinism. So please stay tuned to learn more about this fascinating condition. jump straight into this video. Albinism essentially refers to a condition in which the amount of pigment within our body is reduced. It is important to compare albinos to individuals from the same race. So for example, if an Asian individual is believed to have albinism, they will need to be compared to individuals from the same race who generally will tend to have the same level of skin pigmentation and melanin in a normal state. In terms of albinism then, it can affect all different races. In terms of the types, there can be one type which just exclusively affects the eyes, whereas there can be another type which can affect both the eyes and the skin. In terms of the eye findings with albinos or albinism, they can be hugely varied. And what I will do is essentially summarize what the key findings are and provide an associated picture just to um, help with understanding of what specific structures I am talking about and referring to. So the first obvious thing that albinos will tend to have is iris issues. Because our iris, i.e. the colored part of our eye, usually has pigment associated with it, which makes it up essentially, if there's a lack of pigment due to albinism, then there will be what's referred to as iris transillumination defects. Essentially, a, a crude way of thinking of this can be um, the iris, which is the colored part of the eye, will effectively have holes in there. Um, where light will pass through to the back of the eye and come back through to the front of the eye um, and reveal areas of atrophy. Another association with albinism is patients tend to have nystagmus. Nystagmus is essentially where our eye wobbles and this tends to happen in a very rhythmic manner and it's an involuntary movement. In albinism, the retina and different components of the retina will not develop normally. So the two obvious areas where this can manifest is optic nerve hypoplasia and also foveal hypoplasia, which essentially refers to underdevelopment of these two areas. And therefore this has a knock-on effect in terms of the functioning of these two particular areas. Another classic component of albinism with respect to the eye is the abnormal visual pathway. And what tends to happen in albinism is that more fibers cross over at the chiasm. Patients with albinism also have um, a greater association with turns in individuals' eyes. And it goes without saying, if the iris, i.e. the colored part of the eye, is not present, then patients will likely be very sensitive to light, which is referred to as photophobia. There are several different subcategories of albinism, which have different associated gene defects and are inherited in a slightly different way. That is beyond the scope of this short video, but just bear in mind that albinism is not um, a simple um, inherited condition. It can be very complex and in terms of the manifestations, they can therefore be very varied. Albinism can also be associated and be part of other syndromes. A few of these syndromes to mention include Wardenberg syndrome and hermansky pudlak syndrome. Patients with albinism will require a general medical examination and then an ocular examination also. The need for the medical examination is because, if you think about it, there's a lack of melanin in the skin, therefore the risk of exposure to UV is greater. If you watch my video about UV in the eye, um, you can learn more about this, which I will link above and below. Um, the lack of the protective function, which is normally provided by melanin, which is not present in these albinos, means they are more likely develop, to develop things such as skin cancers. Patients with al 
albinism will require careful ocular assessment to screen for things such as a refractive error, i.e. do they require glasses, if they have a turn in their eyes, do they require surgery, do they require sunglasses. Also a key thing to think about is do they have nystagmus and do they have a turn in their eyes and if so would they benefit from any further interventions such as surgery. Thank you so much for watching this short video about albinism. I provided an overview about what albinism is. There's several different ways in which it can affect the eyes, the complex nature in which it can be inherited and the varied um, um, signs that can show in individuals due to this complex inheritance pattern and form. If you've liked this video, please do like, comment, share and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you so much. Take care.